who would you vote for? Um, I haven't really like dug into the parties like that. Um, so really, I don't know because I mean, ANC is corrupt, DA is corrupt, EFF is corrupt. At the moment, I wouldn't say any is okay. one hundred percent there, but I think I'm leaning to more towards more left orientated parties. I'd say probably like Azaf or, or like the EFF. I honestly think the EFF is yeah. probably like our best bet at this point. Why? Um, <laughs> bro, I'm a communist and those are like the most communist adjacent parties, you know what I mean? They, um, I agree with a lot of the things they say. I think, you know, the DA's coalition of Rise and Zion, the Action SA, all of those parties are still, they're bought by the Oppenheimers. You can see if you look at the funding of each of their parties, they're funded all by different branches of the Oppenheimers. So you can't really expect to exist within a democracy when you have all of these parties being funded by the ruling class. So obviously I'm not going to be supporting those areas of politics and I don't think I'll be voting for the ANC either. So I think that's where my politics leans in these All of the other parties have their own, well from what I know they have their own thing, but I can't give you like an exact answer because you know as well coalition governments don't always work. Yeah. So it's not to say okay we'll take a bit from the PA, we'll take a bit from the IFP, we'll take a bit from here. Yeah. So yeah it's it, it's a difficult one but that's obviously on my part lack of research lack okay. of knowledge there are a lot of things i disagree with also but what do you mostly agree with i don't think it's going to happen through like voting but the land redistribution shit, i agree with that like decolonizing education i agree with um just kind of removing power from capital and putting it in the hands of the people for sure, I agree with that as well. Because, like, I think for young people especially, like, it's very important for us to engage with the different manifestos that these political parties are putting out. For me, personally, the ANC's manifesto, they have the perfect constitution. It's just about executing it. They don't. Like, their manifesto, I would say, 10 out of 10. But it's the execution and it's the people that are in authority within that particular party. For me, the ANC, I don't think it's, it's helpful to engage in their... Uh, a manifesto because they're telling us about things that they're still going to do in 30 years after after the fact but that's fine that's why we're here but i really think you should engage for instance the a the eff's manifesto if i'm not mistaken is like 13 13 chapters i think and it goes through like different sectors of society it speaks about um social development it speaks about health care it speaks about housing it speaks about the um energy sector it speaks about free education it speaks about how you're going to ensure that youth get jobs it speaks about so many it speaks about the lgbtqia plus community as well it speaks about women it speaks about gender it speaks about so many different things that could be improving in this country so i think people should definitely go out and i think from the manifestos i've read the da i've read as well the da i think is like 13 pages if i'm not mistaken it's probably less than that but it's also about like the effort these political parties are making to like ensure that you actually understand what they want to do when they get into office. Have they done their homework? Do they have the stats about the things they're talking about as well? And I think for me, with the, all the different manifestos I've read, the EFF manifesto is the most um, informative and it's the most innovative when you think about how we're going to change South Africa. Theory yet to, hey, can't pronounce this word. How do you say it? Theoretically. Thank you. I'm not going to say it, that word, yeah. Okay. I affiliate with the, a with the EFF. I affiliate with the EFF. I think practically what their manifesto is, and because I've read it before, what they are striving to do pr from, from, their, from their manifesto, I believe in. But for what they stand for in, uh, uh, in public demonstration is incredibly controversial. I think we're all aware of that. Um, so from, from a theory base, I would say the best way forward for us is a radical movement. And that is what the EFF is wanting to employ is a complete radical movement, which I believe if you look back into history, um, all our greatest achievements have happened due to radical movement. ANC, for example, they were seen as, uh, what's the word now I'm looking for? Um, Terrorists. Terrorists. They were a radical movement. If we look at Malcolm X and, and, and Martin Luther King, their force, they were a radical movement. If we go even back into the 1500s with the French Revolution, it was a radical movement. All forms of change that we have seen, it's all a dominant effect, is due to radical movement. This is TikTok journalism for me right now, but like... <laughs> um, I saw something um, 
I don't know if it's accurate, you can correct me if I'm wrong or if you do know or not, but I saw something around the DA saying that they will remove uh, the BE system completely, something along those lines. Yeah. Some, yeah well, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, they did actually. Yeah. They did They did say that. They were like, um, they'll be removing BE um, and using sustainable development goals and that um, race will not be... Um, a factor. Yes, race wouldn't be a factor. And when that guy's... And then some people want to vote for the DA. Like, you cannot be, like, especially in South Africa, race is something that you always have to consider because race has close, um, Ngatin, like, race is a determinant of most of the time of your economic standing in society. So when you look at the top 1% of people in South Africa that own the wealth, right? They own about above 90% of the wealth and majority of them are whites, right? So it's really stupid for someone to be like, I'm not going to look at race when I want to transform the economy of this country. Because if you fail to look at race, you'll fail to see that majority of people that have wealth in South Africa and have majority of the wealth in South Africa are white people. And the most poorest of the poor are black people. And that is something you need to take into consideration if you really are about transforming the economy the economy of South Africa. And well I don't I don't agree with what the DA says. I've never agreed in anything that the DA says really. So yeah. Okay. Again, please don't be led by dumb people guys. At least it please complete your betrayal. Another thing I wanna just say publicly on this YouTube channel if I have a chance is I think there's this massive expectation that if we have a new party to come to be that we just think that magically 30 years of South Africa just magically going to change in four years. That's not logical. Like, we're not going to see any change in four years. Probably, maybe we might see change in, like, maybe two terms of that party, which will be eight years. But in a term, we can't really expect, you know, for example, ESCOM to be solved. If it does, well, alhamdulillah, if that happens. Yeah. But practically, we need to bring someone new, someone fresh, someone young, specifically, who can really see the problems and, 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 and fix them. That's my notion. At this point, I'm going to start my own party. So, well, What are you calling it? I'll vote for uh, you. Um, you got my vote. Like, guys, what better charisma. name than Charisma? charisma. <laughs> vote Charisma, guys. 2020. <laughs> when is the next elections? For you? 2028? Vote Charisma, guys. That's so far. No. It, okay. it is far, yeah. but it gives me time to build up my foundation and my loyal followers. Like, here's number one. Let's go. And we're only going to grow from here. Yeah, yeah.